Hey, welcome everybody, and uh, welcome to the first video in a series about a new open source product we have called Rhino Inside Revit. It is a product that allows you to smooth the workflow out between Rhino and Revit, since it seems like there's a lot of people that are modeling in Rhino and, and they're trying to get some geometry cross into Revit in a way that Revit likes it. And this is uh, hopefully a tool that will help you get there. What we've done is we've actually taken Rhino and uh, made it possible to embed Rhino in another application's memory space. And so that's what the technology is based on. This video is about how to uh, find, install, and uh, get Rhino Inside Revit running. Uh, the subsequent uh, videos that will be coming have to do with specific workflows between the two products using the Inside product. So let's get started. So the first part here is how to find a Rhino Inside. Uh, one quick way is to use uh, Google. And so I'm just going to just type in Rhino Inside Revit. And what you'll get is the Rhino Inside page here at the top. So I'll click on that. And so this explains the Rhino Inside technology. One we're quite interested in currently is the Rhino Inside Revit, which is right here. And this plugin, I guess, Rhino as a, as a Revit plugin. It requires Revit 2017 through 2020 be installed on your machine. It also requires the uh, Rhino 7 WIP, the work in progress. This, you can download this for free if you own Rhino 6. And so this actually runs off a Rhino 6 license. So if you have a good Rhino 6 license currently, you can download this and it'll install alongside uh, Rhino 6. And the third thing to download is the actual MSI installer right here. And so you click on this and run the MSI. What that will do is it will tie your Rhino 7 and your Revit together so that you can use them together. So you download the, you get these three things installed on your machine and that's all you need. Another place that you can get Rhino inside and see how it's being updated is uh, through Food for Rhino. And so if you type in Food for Rhino, Rhino inside, you get, you get the Rhino Inside Autodesk Revit. You can see it has some examples, you know, website, different things like that. Another good place to get it. And so hopefully that's a good place to start. Once you install Rhino Inside and you, you can go, go to your Revit, just open a Revit model. And under your add-ins here, you will get a new button which is a Rhino button, and this will load Rhino in Grasshopper once you click it. Now, what's important to understand here is that when you click this, it will use a Rhino license. So once you click on this, it starts up Rhino in Grasshopper and it uses a license, and that's great. If you have Rhino on this machine running and you have this running in Rhino inside Revit, that actually only counts as one license. And so you can actually be running Rhino and running it inside Revit at the same time it counts just as one license. So you click on this, goes through the process of, of trying to load Rhino and Grasshopper, and it will create this toolbar here, Rhinoceros toolbar in Revit. And this is where you can access Rhino and Grasshopper from within Revit. Um, has a Grasshopper player here, if you want to do that. Also has some sample examples for uh, developers right here. So we can uh, start Rhino just by coming over here and clicking on this. And what we get is a full version of Rhino, but now it's running inside Revit's memory space. And you'll see why that's important in just a minute. So we have that. Um, we can also start Grasshopper. And this is Grasshopper running inside of Rhino, running inside of Revit. And here uh, you'll notice that, you know, we have a lot of the standard toolbars that you're used to in Grasshopper, but we have one additional one that's quite interesting. And this is the one that while you're running inside Revit, you get a new toolbar in Grasshopper. This has a lot of Revit aware components in it. So we can add system families or direct shapes. We can interrogate categories, you know, levels and grids, document information, elements, family filters, different things like that. And so this, this Revit toolbar in Grasshopper only starts up when you have it running inside Revit. And, you know, we can edit parameters and things like that. 
So that's just a quick overview on how to run Rhino and Grasshopper. You can also run Grasshopper by itself. By just clicking here, you can see that we get Grasshopper, but this is running inside Revit. And there's some other tools here. One of the things, um, just for fun, I guess, uh, we'll show you Sample 8 here allows you to read a 3DM directly into Revit. So I will, uh, let's get into a 3D view here and go into Rhinoceros, do Sample 8. And let's find a Rhino model here, just a standard everyday Rhino model. I'll just open it. And you can see what it does is it creates a, it takes the whole Rhino model and just reads it in as a generic model in Revit. And so that's a good quick way to get objects out of Rhino into Revit. But in these next few videos that I'll be recording, I'll show you a lot more detailed way of getting information from Rhino into Revit and how you can adjust what family it's part of, uh, how it's wrapped in the data hierarchy of Revit, and really how you can start to really uh, adjust and smooth out the workflow between Rhino and Revit. So I hope that's useful for you to get started, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.